Vern, I just have to tell you, in our last breakout session, three of us were from North Dakota. Three of us. <laughs> Isn't that incredible? And we all knew the places where everybody lived. Wow. <laughs> Small That's world. pretty neat. <laughs> it is. That's very cool. Now I'll mute. <laughs> all right. Okay. So uh, we're kind of on time right now to get started with our sponsors. So I want to thank everybody for uh, attending tonight. Um, and I want to also remind everybody that at the bottom of your screen, you see a, a little chat screen. And if you click on the chat, um, we ask that you put your contact information into that so that all this networking that you just did, it's like handing them the business card. And then at the end of the meeting, uh, where you see the little chat, there's a button with three little dots. And if you click on that button, you can save the chat and it'll save it as a text file or you can print it. And that way you have everybody's contact information that can put that in there. So uh, just a reminder for that. Excuse me, Vern, may yes. I ask a quick question? I understand how to put things in the chat, but I've never been able to see how you can save it. Okay, let me share my screen and see if I can show this to you on here, okay, can you see the uh, the chat screen? No. No. Uh, screen? It doesn't do yeah, that. It doesn't okay. show it. Here, I'll oh, take a okay. screenshot and I'll post it in chat. Of what you're talking okay, about. that would be great. Thank you. Thanks a lot, yeah. Thank There's you. a little button that really? where you type your info. Right, it, yep, I got that. Little icon with three dots on it. Okay. And you click on that and that allows you to, gives you a drop down menu. Oh, see, yeah, mine does, but it doesn't say save on it. Oh, interesting. Mine no, it, actually. No. Does anybody else have that? I've never been able to save, so. Huh. Oh, screen sharing. Yeah, there you oh, go. Okay, so. So here's the button. Where? where? Oh, I, is it not showing it, up yet? It's, no, it's not showing up. <laughs> Sorry, no. it, I guess Zoom doesn't want to show Zoom windows. Son of a gun. That's okay. Somebody's going to put a screenshot on chat. Yeah, but I'll anyway. So we'll see it. Great. Thank you. Okay, so um, that was our networking session of our meeting. And let's see if I can get this slideshow to work. So make sure that you visit our website. Uh, we try to re put the recordings of this and the slides onto the um, onto the site itself. When you're there, if you're in Colorado and you're getting used to uh, just getting started, you want to go to the key links page and under the helpful links, the very first link on there is the cha chapter seven uh, drafts and regulations. So that is... Um, that's what you need to know. These are all the rules in Colorado that you need to know. You need to know this like the back of your hand. Uh, it's about 67 pages. And I'm hearing rumors that there's going to be some revisions in this coming out in January. So one of our meetings coming up may talk about those revisions. Uh, also, we've got a link to the um, RALNOTCON. This is the national conference. It's going to be online this year. So that's, uh, that's up there in a the highlighted area. And then we have our Facebook page and we encourage everybody to join the Facebook page. Uh, this is a community, well, you know what Facebook is. So, hey, if you're looking for something, um, put it on here. I know that, uh, I think Brianna found uh, some help one time on this page, um, maybe, or, and we've gotten rid of some furniture on this page. So um, be sure to join a group and contribute. And then of course, here's the meetup page that uh, we just asked to uh, RSVP to because it just helps us prepare. It's not a big deal these days because uh, everything's uh, virtual, but as we get back into having live meetings, we have to make sure that the restaurant knows how many people we're going to have show up so they can prepare properly. And now a word from our sponsors. These are the sponsors that we have currently. And the first one is the uh, RAL National Association. If you're a member of the National Association, you do get an associate. Uh, if you're a member of Denver ALR, you get an associate level membership of the RALNA. 
um, a newsletter that they put out, access to their group purchasing benefits. And this, uh, they've been working on this and they're starting to get some really nice um, uh, benefits in there. And then um, half off the full membership. And I think that there's a discount that you can get towards your uh, RALNOTCON ticket. And our, one of our members uh, who happens to not be here tonight is actually the president of this national association. That's Mr. Brian Pinkowski. Also, we have Anderson Legal Business and Tax Advisors. And these are the guys that if you're setting up your LLC, they can help you do that. They just uh, do business structures. They do taxes. Um, they will review your, if you're a platinum member or whatever it is, they'll review your last two years of tax returns just to see if your CPA missed anything. Um, they've given me some terrific ideas on saving taxes. Uh, so, um, you know, it's some really cool stuff that I've never heard from any other accountants. So I would definitely look into them. Um, I've been using them for probably about three to four years and uh, I do not regret it. Uh, next, we have the Residential Assisted Living Academy. This is Gene Greeno's group. This is, if you're just getting into this, this is a great source so that you can go in and actually uh, get education and mentorship from their group. Uh, they do have uh, um, different presentations. They even have an online course that you could take as well. It uh, kind of mimics their three-day course, but you don't have to travel anywhere. I actually did that course again. I did the three day several years ago and I got involved in this and did their online uh, earlier this year just to see if anything had changed and learned a few things. So, um, and it's pretty reasonably priced too. Um, assisted living marketing. This is uh, Mr. Peter Brissett and Peter is actually with us tonight. And Peter, would you like to say a word or two about your services? Absolutely. Uh, thank you guys for having me. Uh, we have been working in this space for a long time, over 10 years now, and we're very passionate about it. We love what you guys do. We love that you care for the most vulnerable in our uh, communities. And, uh, and my heart goes out to you guys during <laughs> the whole COVID thing and the challenges that you're facing right now. So uh, our initial goal is just to help folks like you in any way that we could and that worked out that well we happen to do websites and SEO and ads for you and things like that and so uh, our goal is to help good families find good places to live and uh, that's what we do so thanks. Thank you Peter and Peter is actually the one that built our website that I showed you earlier uh, so thanks so much for building that and keeping that up and running for us, Peter. Uh, next, we have the uh, Pinkowski Law, and um, they are not here tonight. They probably got stuck in my problems with the link, so I'm kind of embarrassed about that. Anyway, uh, Pinkowski Law, um, we're lucky to have these guys in our backyard. This is Brian and Michelle Pinkowski. Brian is actually the president of the RALNA. And Michelle is an attorney that helps you with zoning and figuring out how do you increase your bed count. And they work nationwide on this kind of a um, space. So uh, we had some problems last year when they were changing the regulations and these two got involved and really did a huge amount for the community to, to keep us from, you know, some of the things that they were wanting to change in the regulations were absolutely ridiculous. And with their help and leadership, we were able to mitigate a lot of those things that would have had a pretty big impact on how you would operate your business. So uh, if you need an attorney in this space, and they are definitely ones go to, PinkowskiLaw.com. Uh, next, we have A Better Way Realty, and this is where I'm from. So uh, the group that I uh, hang my license with, um, they've been doing assisted living financing uh, since 2009. And they've got a very unique product where um, they can basically buy the house and get it fixed up and give you an option to buy it down the road. So if you ha have any questions about what that program looks like, then you can look here at the website, RALLeaseOptions.com. It kind of explains the whole program. 
We've done uh, several deals uh, this year. We just did uh, two houses that we closed, oh, um, probably uh, I'd say about three weeks ago. We've got another house that we're closing in two more weeks. Uh, we currently own about 24 houses right now that we lease to operators. So next, I want to introduce to you Brianna and Craig McKay. And they're a great couple. They're clients of ours that came to us with an idea. And, uh, you know, at first we were thinking, boy, I don't know if we could make this work. And, you know, Craig was pretty persistent about, hey, this, this will work. So we took a good look at it and ran the numbers and thought, wow, this really could work. So they, they bought a house that had been an up and running business, but it happened to have an extra lot right next door that was attached. So, and Craig being a contractor had this great idea about building an addition to this house. And they just finished this up uh, a few months ago and I wanted them to share their story because I'm so impressed with what they've done and the fact that, you know, they've taken this thing to a 16 bed because 16 beds rock, they make money and they're gonna do just awesome with this house. We're really proud of them as a, a client and as just people. So I wanted to ask them to join us. And if you would all give a round of applause for Brianna and Craig McKay. <laughs> and Brianna, would you like to share your screen and tell us your story? Yes, um, bear with me here. Let me uh, get in there. And I will do that. Oh, here we go. Okay. It's taken just a minute here. Here we go. All right. Can everybody see our screen? Yes. yes. Perfect. Yes, I believe so. So, um, Basically, yes, uh, we're Craig and Brianna Bacay. Um, this is our very first home. So we um, just got into this business a little over a year ago. And um, we got into the business, you know, essentially, we were looking for something to invest. Originally had thoughts of multifamily because I have a background in property management. Wasn't too passionate about that. Um, but we had happened upon some information in this industry and um, it just flew from there. I think October of 2018, we discovered the industry and by March of 2019, we were already under contract. So we moved very quickly. Um, so it was, it's been a whirlwind. I don't remember much of the last year and a half because <laughs> it's been so crazy. So we'll do our best to recollect everything here. Um, basically, you know, it was for us, it was understanding the industry, understanding costs associated, um, you know, as well as the regulations. So we've, we've attended, um, you know, seminars, obviously with ALRs, plenty of those. Um, we um, joined Denver ALR, so we met up with Vern and um, joined up the group. It's been extremely helpful, lots of networking. We've met some great people. Um, Gene Garino, we went to his three-day course um, in Arizona that uh, Vern talked about. I also did the online prior to that, which was a good starting point. Correct. Uh, we actually met our current mentor there. Um, she's on, she's on the, the Zoom tonight with us, Miss Kathy Dyer. Give her a round of applause because we couldn't have done it all without her. Um, she's been amazing. And, um, you know, pulling up, obviously, I, I, I took the administrator course and I was lucky enough without having any experience, I got my administrator license um, the month prior to it going to the new regulation where you had to have two years of experience before you could get your administrator's license. So we, the timing was just impeccable for us. 
Um, and as we go through the slides, we'll talk about that as, as a theme throughout this whole thing. Um, but I was able to get my administrator license. So I am the administrator on record for the home. Um, that coupled with, you know, my previous property management experience, we knew we could definitely pull it off. Um, so we've, we've, you know, pulled off almost the, un, the unimaginable, I think, at this point. We both have full-time jobs during the day as well. Um, so obviously, you know, this, it was important for us to understand the ins and outs of everything. So we, we were pretty sure we'd be able to, to handle it. Um, putting it into action, you know, we had to decide what type of property we were looking for. For us, it was um, financially made more sense for us to find an existing home that we could expand. Um, given the fact that Craig does build homes for a living, he's a contractor, it just made more sense. And we knew we could do it for less money than hiring someone else. Um, so what we found was um, with Vern's help, actually, Vern was um, our realtor, and uh, we found this seven bedroom existing. Um, it was on little over half an acre. They were literally, um, they were 100% occupied at the time which, with eight residents, licensed for 12, but you could not put 12 residents in that home. It was a seven bedroom house. Yeah, the, just only one of the rooms could be doubled up. The rest were, were not, it just wasn't feasible. Um, and so only 11% of the property was being utilized. So we knew there was great potential. Um, you know, obviously with Craig being the contractor, we saw the potential right away. And so um, given the fact that he's been in this industry for so many years, 15 plus years, uh, we utilized our resources. We had an architect that walked the property with us. Um, and we've used him for 20 plus years. So got a good relationship with him too. Mm -hmm. Um, so he drew up a quick, uh, on a sheet of paper, some quick tentative plans and through the process, we changed them up a bit and we'll show you um, the plans here on some, on a future slide. Um, and we went under contract. Um, so it was a very, very, very quick um, process for us. Uh, we utilized um, some spreadsheets, you know, just again with the industry knowledge on the financials. Um, we knew that, you know, obviously anyone could do the math. Um, if you're doubling up your bedrooms, your the profits are going to be there. So it was a no-brainer for us. Um, at this point, we had some challenges. So the existing property, the it was listed pretty high. It had been on the market for a couple of years. Um, it was crazy overpriced. Extremely overpriced. And so lucky for, again, timing was a factor for us. We had just found out about all of this industry and um, they had just reduced the price by half a million. So it was pretty substantial. And it was still um, overpriced. And it was still overpriced. For um, what they're offering. And it was only because their financials really didn't support the asking price. Um, it, was, um, it was the home, it was six siblings that owned the home. And um, they, so there was no debt essentially on the property. It was the home that they grew up in. And originally created it nine years ago for their mother um, and so they had remodeled the whole place back in 2012 and added you know some square footage onto the home and you know for them with no debt on the property you know the, the smaller profits weren't that big of a deal they really didn't do it to make money they did it to have a home for their mother so um, you know and again you know we had to work those those things out. We had to negotiate the sale price. Um, coupled with our lack of experience running an ALR, um, trying to get lending, you know, we could get it because of my previous property management experience. However, they wanted to put a lien on all of our assets, um, which we just weren't keen to at the time. Um, so we actually, um, you know, worked with Vern and we did the lease option. Um, so that's what we're currently in now. Um, we knew the potential, um, so it was it was the best option for us at the time. Um, so we've we've done pretty well with that option, I think. And um, part of the closing process too was was tough because you know the existing owner was very protective of 
the information we needed, vendor information. Um, we didn't get any of that information until three days before closing. So it was a tough process, very stressful. Um, but, you know, I, I find that's, that's from what I'm talking with other people, it seems to be pretty typical. Um, so something you have to plan for. Um, and just knowing, again, those industry costs and getting a good idea of what those might be so you can jump into action when need be. Um, you know, the inspection process wasn't too terrible, but, you know, it was occupied. And um, so we had to be really careful. The, the previous owner did not want anybody to know that the property was for sale, which, again, I think is pretty typical as well. And so, um, you know, that made it a little challenging and, you know, had to be very careful when we were present, um, which, again, you know, respecting the process. Um, we ended up doing uh, the lease option as well as a separate purchase agreement for the remaining assets of the, of the property. So we purchased everything on the property um, that was currently there, all the furniture, the office equipment, everything. So we worked out a deal with the um, previous owner on that as well. Um, so before closing, these are the things that we had to work on. Um, Again, I took the administrator test, um, got in just in time before they made the changes. Um, we had to negotiate the lease option. So we worked with Vern very heavily on that. Um, with our, along with our business plan, we wanted to keep that um, you know, on point. We had to finalize all the building plans with the architect, the engineer. The, I mean, it was, it was a lot. And this is something Craig can speak on. Um, city planner, because he's been building for quite some time, he had a good uh, rapport with the city of Arvada. And they're probably one of the easier municipalities to deal with, which also made it helpful. Um, so we submitted our plans um, to uh, the Division of Fire and Prevention Control. They had to approve them, um, plus the city planner, obviously. And um, lucky for us, because we were going to break ground before December of 2019, we missed all the FGI guideline requirements. So again, timing was of the essence. And so it really worked out for us. Existing facility. And they grandfathered us in, yes, because we were an existing facility. Um, so we were able to do our addition without having to. New construction. Correct. It wasn't new construction. So again, timing was everything for us. And um, we got in pretty, pretty easy there. Um, the licensing process was actually fairly easy. Um, I had a great contact through um, the health department and she was very resourceful for me and um, very helpful. So I, we emailed back and forth. She gave me all the information I needed and her and I knocked it out and got it done um, with perfect timing. So we did not have a lapse in our license. So obviously we were a new entity, so we had to get the licensing in our name and we were able to get it done, um, perfect timing. Um, same thing with my insurance. Um, we worked with um, an insurance provider and it was taking them two weeks before I'd even hear back from anything. And we needed to have our insurance in place before we closed. And so luckily um, Kathy had someone that she was already using and I gave him a call on a Saturday, which was the Saturday before we closed on a Wednesday, that following Wednesday. Sure. And so I called him on a Saturday just to leave a voicemail thinking he'd call me back on Monday. He was at a wedding and he called me within the hour. This guy's amazing. I would recommend them anytime and I'll give you his information if you like. Um, and by Wednesday, he had us covered for everything that we needed um, to close. So it was, that was a little stressful. <laughs> and this, this all happened, you know, a little over a year ago. So there's a lot of, it's been a whirlwind and I don't remember a lot of it because it's been so crazy. Um, but, you know, we had a lot of people, it took a village, we had a lot of people on our side. So we had our mentor, um, we had Vern, who was helpful. We had this, the the contact to the state. It's all really, in, and, and actually, Brian and, Michelle. Brian and Michelle Pinkowski, we utilized them as well. Um, and so we worked with, actually, Michelle 
um, on the, the increase in the license because it was originally licensed for 12, well, we knew we needed to have 16. And so she actually um, wrote a letter um, to the city and was able and got it approved like that. Um, so, you know, just having those people and we met all these people through Denver ALR. So Denver ALR has been a really great resource for us. Um, so definitely utilize the people in this group because it literally takes a village. Um, Pre-construction. So basically the information known prior to purchase, this was really important, very, very important. Um, city planner zoning. So that was where Michelle came into place. That is where, you know, his relationship with the city of Arvada came into play, um, you know, Knowing your municipality is a big one. You have to know what the rules are and what they require. So definitely you can go in and talk to the city planner, wherever the new municipality is that you're thinking of purchasing in or, or building in. Um, very, very key. Um, knowing those requirements, you know, do, is there an HOA? Um, knowing their requirements. Your proximity to an existing or in another house, you know, you can't be, uh, I, you know, every municipality is different, uh, but there, there's a certain proximity. You can't be close to another facility. So you got to take that into account too. Correct. And now, now at this point in time, you have to know the FGI guidelines. So also working with a contractor that knows the F FGI guidelines is very key as well. Um, I think that's one of the more pivotal or pivotal, um, parts of the process is if, if you are going to build, remodel, build new construction, you need to have a contractor that knows the guidelines, that knows um, the requirements from the state regulations. And, and your architect too. And your architect as well. Very, very important. And typically if you have a good contractor, they're going to have a good architect as well. Um, so very important there. Um, your permits, um, definitely those take time. So, you know, we applied for our permit. It took about took four months before we got them uh, finally. Uh, it, it seemed like it was taking forever. It was very frustrating. But yes, uh, four, four months later, we got them. Correct. So that is, and that's pretty typical. It takes time to get the permits. Um, so just being able to pre-plan for that um, and being, again, that he's, uh, in the industry of, of construction, he, he knew all this information ahead of time. So that was made it easier for us to prepare. Um, lining up contractors, obviously you wanna make sure you're going to have contractors, um, subs available um, to work on your project. So that's going, you know, that's a, another that's big one. Contractor's job. Correct, yes, that, that's this guy's job. Um, challenges, you know, at first the city, um, we're going to require an A license from the contractor, which is basically a license you need to build an airport. Like you, you can build anything, hotels, airports, like crazy. That, that It's total overkill. And they, they were incorrect in that. So thankfully, uh, we went back and forth for weeks on that. And it ultimately, uh, uh, just a B license, which is just a, a commercial license was sufficient. Uh, so that worked out well, but th that was pretty stressful. I was trying to scramble to find somebody with an A license to help me out, but luckily we didn't come to that. And that would be very costly. Uh, we priced it out and it, it was at the time, you know, they, they charge a certain percentage of your building yeah, cost. I, I, yeah. The people I found, they wanted like 3% of the overall, but, uh, cost of the building. So that adds up pretty quick. So. Mm -hmm. And originally in the past, you could have your C license, which is residential. Very easy. I mean, we are doing residential. Um, however, they moved to now requiring the B license, commercial license. So once it became commercial status, our vendor bids jumped in price substantially. Yeah, it had this been just an addition on a house, which exactly what it was, uh, it, the prices would have been quite a bit less. But due to the fact that it's commercial, virtually nothing else changed except for the prices that they charged me. So that was uh, a little bit of a surprise to me, uh, given that they're my current subs and why are the prices going up? And it was due 
exclusively to just being commercial. So, uh, again, that was first time doing it. So that, that was news to me, but no, no big deal. Um, uh, we planned for, we, we planned in the budget. Um, but uh, you, so. you have a lot more costs involved with commercial. Um, typically in residential, you uh, have mm -hmm. your heating system that's designed by uh, an engineer, but being commercial, you have to get all the mechanicals. So your heating, your electrical, your plumbing all has to be designed. Uh, that was like 10 grand. So that, that was pretty costly too. If, you, if, if that would have been just a reg, regular residential house, that would have cost 1500 bucks. So uh, a pretty big difference there in, in costs. So uh, yeah. So just something to think about as well. Um, that was something that we learned in the process. So uh, now we know, so it's, you know. This here is the original floor plan of the existing home. So you can see there were seven bedrooms um, and we did not change anything with the existing floor plan. Uh, the addition was added. You can see down here at the bottom of the screen um, I don't know if you could see my arrow right North here, Common. North Common. This is where we put the addition on. This is where we add it on. And I'll show you the, you know, the next, or I'll show you the plans here in a moment. Um, so I'll let you look at that for just a quick second. So you could see here, there's a, a, a bathroom here. These two bedrooms shared this bathroom. This had the walk-in tub that was shared with from this bedroom. This had the shower, walk-in shower. And then these, these bedrooms here all have a half, half bath. So this is what the house looked like before we touched it. So this is, this, this is that North Common Wall right here. So this is where we started adding on and came out this way. So this is, all this is now building, which you'll see shortly but this is all gardens. You can't really see, the gardens are way over here, so you can't really see too much of them in this picture. Um, this is the front of the house. We didn't touch it, so this is, still looks the same. And this is, this was prior, this was a garage. However, they converted that to um, a bedroom and that bathroom, um, that shared bathroom. Two bedrooms. So breaking ground. Um, through Denver ALR, uh, we had met Marshall Cook, who is the, the guy for the FGI, I call him. Um, he did a presentation at one of the meetup groups and we, we worked very closely with him. Um, and that's when we discovered, you know, we were grandfathered in due to our being an existing facility because we broke ground before December. Um, and that's when we applied for our increase in our licensure. Um, since we were already approved from the city to do a 16 bed, at that point, we just had to go through the state health department to apply for the license. And um, we, we literally didn't get our increase in our license until we received our CO. So we applied for the increase last year, right when we broke ground. And it took, they, they would not give us the increase until we received our CO and everything was signed off by the Denver or the, the, uh, the fire, uh, fire life and safety code. So division of fire prevention and the city, and the city as well. Um, so we had just received our increase in licensure, which was great. So we were very happy about that. Um, challenges, of course, we live in Colorado. We broke ground in November and what happened? We had a blizzard. <laughs> like we just dug the foundation and got hammered with a ton of snow. So that took, that was a big mess. That was that was a nightmare. Um, I, I, I <laughs> over Thanksgiving, I had two guys shoveling out 3,400 square feet of of 15 inches of snow. So I, I felt really bad for those guys, but uh, yeah. that was unfortunate. Uh, but that was that was a muddy mess for months. Like that that took five months for that to to finally dry out. It took a long time, so that that sucked. Yeah, so that was a big, big um, speed bump for us. So it took us, you know, put us behind, obviously, with our construction. Um, yeah, that that 
that snowstorm pushed the foundation guys back two weeks. So all of their stuff that they were currently working on got on hold. So that in turn, deli- you know, pushed everybody else behind them back. So that, that delayed us about two weeks. And then, uh, yeah, then I think that was the only delay for weather. Um, a little later in the project, my plumber uh, ended up with COVID and he was like really, really sick for like three weeks. And that held me up getting my CO for like three weeks because he needed to make one correction. And uh, I mean, it, it ended up being fine. But uh, again, that just, that held us up almost a month because of him getting sick. So, and then, you know, obviously every dealing with the city and the government's a pain in the butt. And uh, we, we had uh, the city planner, the guy who did the final CO uh, drop the ball and uh, for about two and a half weeks, uh, our request for the CO sat on his desk. So uh, once, I mean, I, I would call him and try to get a status update. And once he finally realized what had happened, he was really apologetic and real nice about it. it came out and handled it no problem. Uh, but again, we, we had, but for all, all three of those things, we probably had at least two months of, of delays just, just in that alone. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, obviously this is all happening during COVID. So <laughs> getting a hold of people during COVID so, was also a challenge. So yeah, the city shut down for two weeks, uh, no inspections whatsoever. But luckily the Friday before that happened, I got my uh, drywall inspection. So I was able to rock and roll. So that didn't hold me up, but it very well might have. That would have really been painful. Uh, mm-hmm. But thankfully, we we got by one day, so that was that was lucky. Again, timing timing has been really been on our side during this project, so we've been very lucky. Um, so here, and this is I apologize, it's a small picture, but if you can see here, this was the original house right here, and so this is where we added on. So these are kind of rough plans. It's it's hard to see in here, and obviously these. This will be shared on the website, um, so you'll be able to have a closer look at it. But you can see where we added in the eight bedrooms, um, nine bathrooms, laundry room, a laundry room, bedroom. and then a med closet. As, we, yeah, we changed it up, but as well as um, a big, large, extra common area. So we now have three common areas in this house. So overall, total square footage we're about 6,900 6, square feet. So good size, um, good size, all on one level. Um, and, and now we're only still utilizing 25% of the property. So we've got some great landscaping, we have gardens and we'll show you some of that here too. So these, I have pictures of the process. Um, this was where we dug out the- Pre-snowstorm. Pre-snowstorm, yes. <laughs> um, so there's, there's quite a few pictures here. Um, so we'll just run through them. More, yeah. I mean, just more of digging the foundation. That's pouring the footing. That's um, the walls formed up. And then the roll on the floors. Subfloor. Starting to stand walls. Trusses coming. Starting to set trusses. Siding. Yeah. Roof. So the brick were matching the existing house. It had a. Uh, brick wainscot there so or we matched it this you know so it looks like it's always been there yeah you can't even tell that we did an addition on this house it, it was it was amazing so we we had two porches prior now we actually have three porches on the house which we'll show you here shortly that's a, a rolling shower there shower pan
So in this house, instead of uh, doing your standard blow in fill insulation, I opted to do the polyurethane sp spray on the roof deck and then they put bats in underneath it. It added about $10,000 to the cost of the build, but I've got some after pictures and it's, it's just a much better job. It makes the whole attic condition space. Um, you don't have a foot and a half of insulation up there. So if you ever needed to go up there and, and, and do any sort of repair or f find anything, it, it's awesome. It's, it's like there, you know, I'll show you a picture uh, coming up here. That's the guy spraying it. And then those are the bats that they, they, they put in after the fact. And just the bathroom. Then we had to build a, a, a pretty long ramp uh, in the back. So this is the, the, found the, the footing for that and the, the wall for it. And then they're pouring it. Then we put a, I think it was 22 by 17 foot addition onto the existing deck. So we expanded that pretty substantially too. So it, uh, it, it where the rock wall is there, uh, that's where the ended. planter, that's where the existing or the old deck uh, stopped. So everything from there out was new. And then the original house had vaulted ceilings just on the other side of those doors. So we, we uh, decided to do uh, vaulted ceilings in here as well and real happy with the way it turned out. And then, oh, oh, sorry. And then that's the, uh, that, that door here is on the right is the existing de uh, door that led out to the deck. And then that's handrail we had to put up for the rail or for the ramp. Generator, put a nice big backup generator in there. 30, 36 kilowatt. And then we put the gardens, we put, it was, there was 20 gardens before. I think we have what, 10, 10 now. So it cut it in half, but uh, you know, we still have them and uh, it's, it's nice. It turned out really nice this summer. And we actually have room to add in more gardens next year if we want to. Yeah, we can add a few more if we need to. So construction began in November of 2019, completed in July of 2020. Obviously, you know, we've already talked about the delays that we had um, involved. So here, this is what it, the new addition now looks like. Um, so we have the gardens here with some growth. Um, obviously, this is after our crazy snowstorm that happened and a couple of weeks ago where we thought we were going to lose everything. Thankfully, we, we were able to salvage most of it. Um, here's this, here's the new deck. This is where um, we built that ramp going down. So this is another deck patio. Uh, patio. Um, this is the, the, the deck where we expanded the deck here. Um, and this is, this is all brand new house here. Um, this is the interior. We're still decorating. We haven't quite finished all the decorating just yet, but priorities have been just getting residents in and um, making sure everything's safe and clean. So, so this is a common area here, the new common, one of the new common areas that we built. Oh, it's the only common Or the, the only one we built, obviously, but we, it's an additional one that we have. And then hallway. So because we had a 20 foot hallway, we had to put an exit door over here to the left. That was part of the regulations. So this is the hallway. Mm -hmm. And this, Craig built these handrails himself and stained them himself. I mean, I'm just so proud of them. I think they look good. <laughs> um, this is a powder bath. So this uh -huh. is, this is a, you know, for employees or any visitors that want to use the restroom and don't want to go into the rooms. Um, this is an actual bathroom in one of the rooms. Um, so you can see we did the walk-in shower. Um, pretty good sized bathrooms there. This is a doubled up room. So yeah. this is, uh, we made this one a little bit bigger. So it's got two closets in here. 
um, yeah, this, this one's, I think, 11 by 17. Correct. And every other room, they're all the exact same except for this one, and those are 11, 11 by 13. So still a good size. And then the, the bathrooms are, are, are very large. Six, a little over six by 10. Six by, no. Yeah, yeah six by 10. Yeah, this right. is the laundry room that we added. So we have two laundry rooms now, one on the other side of the house plus this one. This has the attic um, access. And then as you can see, all the insulation's up on the roof deck. So it's nice and open, well lit, and you can find anything in there. So I, I felt the, the additional cost to do that was worth it um, just for the uh, ease of future anything so uh, that's I'm pretty happy with that and and it's so far it's really working out nicely uh, yeah so this is one of the naked rooms the the bedrooms yeah so the bathrooms are a little bit smaller here I, I made uh, the doubled up room I think a foot bigger so it's still really good size but yeah still very large so they have closet here, bathroom over here. So this is our contact information. Um, if you would like to have that, we'll leave it on this um, screen. I think the next slide is just for questions. Um, let's see here, let me go back. Let me see if we can see ourselves now. So that's basically our presentation. Um, hopefully that was, a, was informational. I'm sure with questions coming, we'll get some more clarification on some things. Um, it's been a whirlwind. However, it's been well worth it. And um, we're very happy that we got into this business um, and we've just loved every minute of it. I mean, we're both certified in CPR, first aid, food safety, you name it. Uh, QMAP, we're both QMAP. We both have pulled shifts. He's done uh, overnight shifts, uh, plenty of them. Well, <laughs> let's just say I do quite a bit more than that. Uh, for about He's also all the mate, he does all the maintenance. For, for about two months, I was, I work a full-time job. So 40 to 45 hours a week. And then I would work nights. So three nights I'd pull 12 hour shifts. So it was pretty rough there for a while. Uh, I just now uh, stopped doing that. So that, that was uh, a learning experience to be sure. But I think it's an important learning experience. I think as owners, you know, we're very hands-on. And for us, it was important to get in there and, and do. So it just helped us learn more about how, how to run the business. Um, we do have a house manager that manages the day-to-day, -day, you know, activities, the day-to-day -day staff, um, everything scheduling. that's really scheduling, everything, you name it. Everything, yeah. I do all the financials, so I handle all, paying all the bills and handling all the money aspects of everything. Um, so we really rely heavily on, on our house manager to do that. So it's worked out really well for us thus far, and we've got a great model, and, um, you know, I think it's, that's just, we found our sweet spot just again, because we're a little unique contractor, you know, so it really helped quite a bit. You guys I think did that's a terrific job. It's absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it turned out really nice. I'm it's really happy. It's hard to believe that's the same property. <laughs> and I'm right? glad you could keep the gardens. Yeah, us too. That was important to me because I know the residents love that so much. You know, they get their fresh vegetables and flowers all through the summer and fall and they, they loved it. And, and actually, you know, people would ask, how do your residents feel about all this construction? And I'll be honest with you, they loved it. It gave them something to watch every day and see the progress. And, you know, at the time we had only women living in our home and we, we just in the past few months actually got a couple men, which has been nice to have but the ladies loved watching the construction because they loved watching all the workers out there and oogling at them all day long and I, I, they loved it they loved it so they were they were very happy uh to be watching it all day long did you keep the well 
Yeah. We, yep, we kept the well. The well's what actually waters the gardens. So. No, not anymore. Oh, wow. Well, not anymore. The well was, it was just a, it was just for show. It, yeah, it wasn't a problem. Was wow. the well. Yeah. So we yeah. have, we have a ditch that we have, there's a uh, ditch, ditch, right, so. ditch right. So the ditch is actually what waters it's got like the garden. 500 gallon cistern that, that it draws into. So, yeah. So luckily that keeps our, our water bill down. So we don't have to pay using the house water to water the garden. So that's why we were able to keep it. And the community was really happy. We had a lot of, a lot of dedicated gardeners who were uh, a little upset when they saw me ripping it out and uh, were concerned <laughs> about their gardening for the year, but we were able to get it in. And uh, so that was good. And it's been nice. And the timing was perfect. We, when garden season was over is when we broke, we broke ground like a month after garden season ended and we were back up and running when it was time to plant. So it was perfect timing. Again, timing was everything for us on this project. Um, when we first demolished the gardens, um, you're talking, you know, it's a pissed off people. <laughs> they came and prayed over the gardens because they were so upset, but you know, we told them we would be bringing them back and they're very happy and we're happy and the residents are happy. So it worked out very well. And to be honest, they had 20 plots and that was too many for the amount of people who actually wanted to use them. Uh, people would sign up and say they wanted to do it and, and gardening is a lot of work. Uh, and, quite a few people would drop out and just abandon their garden. Uh, so now that it's, it's smaller and you, you've got the people who actually want to be mm -hmm. there and will take care of it are, are there and it's, it's just kind of deal. So it worked out really well, yeah. Terrific. So I know you guys came in under budget, which is absolutely amazing because nobody does that. <laughs> right. <laughs> nobody ever comes in under budget. But yeah, you, guys did. I, you know, I, I salute you for that. Uh, but that's, I, that's this guy. Yeah, 15 and I know, plus years of experience. So, uh, so I, I do have a question that might come up and keeping in mind, Craig, that you did this yourself and saved a lot. What would you expect that um, somebody would be paying per square foot for a build like this? I imagine 225 or maybe 215, something like that. Okay. Depending on, you know, it's totally subjective to your finishes. You, right. you can go high end, low end in the middle there. So um, if you're going to do private pay, I would recommend doing nicer uh, with their own bath. Uh, mm -hmm. Just as nice as you can. Uh, yeah. So I would go higher end. Uh, so you're looking two and a quarter, probably maybe a touch more if you go real high. End. Okay. You, you, well, you know, yeah. at spas and stuff like that, which w would be nice. Uh, but uh, we, we, we just, we, we didn't do this one. I so didn't think a spa was necessary. Somebody that two and a quarter to 250 a square foot would be a, something to budget. Yeah, uh, correct. You can mind it budgets, you know, nobody ever goes under budget. Sure. Right. You, you got a heck of a lot of costs there with your, I was a little surprised. Uh, again, this was probably just, uh, uh, just a learning thing for me, but the, the city of Arvada uh, for the water bill or not the water bill, but the water tap uh, to upgrade was like $72,000. So <gasps> and, then, wow. and then right. that's not even, <laughs> that's not installing them either. So you got to go get street cuts and you got to, uh, dig a ditch to get him a house so that was another 30 so i had a, at least 100 grand just in just to get water uh and uh, we had a second sewer tap uh just the way it worked out um the only other way would have been to have a huge uh ejector pit which those are like 10 grand so th that was just a bad idea the city didn't like it i didn't like it so they allowed me to have a second sewer tap so uh, the every all the everything on the new edition it's got its own sewer line so that, that was a big help too. Mm -hmm. Hey Brianne and Craig this is yes. can I say this is I'm Audrey Krebs I'm I, I'm just I'm amazed I I worked for the Department of Human Services and Aging Services I'm a CSA I have my administrator's license I mean you guys are amazing now I apologize if I missed 
can you give us your background? I mean, Craig, I know you're in construction, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. What was Brianna? Brianna, what were, what did you do? So, I mean, um, <laughs> it's amazing. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, a lot. Um, my background, I was in property management for 13 years. That's right. That's right. And so I managed apartment communities. Um, the last property I managed was a 32 acre single family home, townhome condo property, thousand plus residents. Um, but I did that for many, many years. Um, I got out of that seven years ago and went back to banking. So I actually, am a, uh, I work in finance during the day. Um, so I work with numbers all day. Okay. So just okay. with my prior experience, it just made sense, you know, <sighs> with us coupled together, it just, we always knew we were going to work together in some way or, or form. We just, we weren't sure how we were going to go about it. Well, now we're doing it. So <laughs> no kidding by fire. You, you guys really let nothing stop you. It's amazing. Seriously. Yeah, there's a, a lot of roadblocks, a lot of hurdles to overcome. Uh, but if you're just goal focused and mm -hmm. it's nothing going to stop us and we just kept pushing and that's just the mindset yeah. you have to have because it's not going to be easy. It's going to be tough, you know, and just know that going into it, there's going to be a ton of roadblocks and you just got to just mow through them and, and, and just one foot in front of the other and keep going. Well, yeah. you have, it's beautiful. You have a beautiful home. How many residents do you have right now? Right now we have 11 residents. Okay. Good for um, you. I'm so good. <laughs> yeah. COVID has been very challenging. Um, COVID happened at the worst time ever for us. So that was the worst oh. timing uh, was COVID because, you know, we were, were new. And so we didn't have those relationships established yet. We didn't have relationships with the rehab centers. We didn't have relationships with the doctor's offices. We didn't have relationships with the placement agencies. None of that was in place. So no. when COVID happened, it was like, well, all the p major plans I had for all my, you know, feet on the street, you know, marketing just went kaput. So I've had to do everything over the phone, um, virtual, sell myself, sell the house mm -hmm. like crazy to get these relationships built. And so we're working, you know, all while working a full-time job. We also have three children at home. So yeah, I and can't dealing imagine. with school oh my God. and dealing with school and everything. So it's been crazy. I, it's all a blur at this point. I don't even know how we've survived, <laughs> but we've I, done it. I, you need to write a book or, or, or you need to call, you need to call and, and have a movie made on this. Seriously. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> We were or a pretty, reality TV show, I'm telling you, it would be a hit. You got it. That's it. We oh, were pretty maybe. lucky. Um, we were able to show, uh, before we opened, we were able to show the addition uh, because it was sealed off from the original house. So okay. we were lucky there that uh, we actually got quite a, three or four residents because of that. Uh, right. We were able to show them. But I don't it's care. Okay. It's still, you've done so much more than anyone I know right now. Yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, how, old you know, your, how old are your kids? Uh, five, nine, and 12. Holy fuck. Okay. Yeah. I also have a 26 year old, so, but he's oh. off on his own. I just got so, back from his wedding, so it's been crazy. Oh my God. <laughs> so you throw a wedding in there? I mean, come on. What else you no. got for us? <laughs> are you from North? I, I met two other people. Are you from North Dakota by any chance? No, I'm teasing. No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no, no. Okay, well, congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Seriously. Thank you. Well, wow. That's, that's I also a have a story. Go ahead. I haven't taken questions yet. <laughs> Sure. But again, I want to piggyback on that. You guys are absolutely amazing. I mean, it, inspiring, <laughs> completely inspiring. Um, I did want to ask if you could talk a little bit about um, when you're first buying like finances and Brianna, you said that, you know, a little bit about that. My husband and I are running into right now um, with the refinance, which has kind of put a hold on a couple things. Can you talk a little bit about how much of like of your own money do you invest? Do you try to, I saw that you, you mentioned that you did a lease option. Um, right. Probably what we'd be looking to do, but how much of your own do you, should you expect to invest in something like this? 
we went all in. <laughs> yeah. And that's, and that's pretty much where we're at. We're just running into, like I said, a delay, but that's okay. <laughs> we had two rentals that we sold to make this happen. Yes. So uh, it, we just, just that's all. That's how we had to make it happen. And so we, mm -hmm. we sold them, and and that's how we funded it. Yeah. Yeah. So it, luckily, we bought those right, and and uh, and had had enough money to make it happen. So. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, timing was everything. Um, you know, we had two rental properties. You know, one was a long-term uh, rental, um, and so we sold that, and then um, mm -hmm. we just, and then we sold our last house that we lived into that that we turned into a rental. Um, sold it right before we had to deal with capital gains, and it was just perfect. So, <laughs> so that actually funded us being able to purchase this um, and do the lease option. Um, so, I mean, you know, it's, it's really going to just determine on, you know, you have to look at how much money you're willing to put in. And, and we literally have put our life savings into this. Um, and so we have a lot riding on this to be successful, which is just where most of our drive comes from. I think, I think just naturally we have that drive anyway, but I think you just have to really look at. How much are you willing to put in? And when you do it, you have to just go all in and you just, that's it. That's, at the end of the day, you have to know hundred percent. That's what you're doing and just go for it. Oh, that's, wow. that's great. That's awesome. Again, thank you both for sharing your story. Absolutely. It Absolutely. Is inspiring. <laughs> so. Absolutely. Do we have any other questions from our attendees? Don't be shy. Is, is, is your home totally private pay then? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, I'm gonna have to look you up. That's for sure. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So my question for um, the husband, um, sure. will, you be, will you be able to um, doing for others if somebody asks you to do for them like what you did for yourself? Yeah, absolutely. With that experience that you have, you know what to do and what not to do. And, for sure. Know, that, you that was into a, what to avoid and all that kind of stuff. Very yeah. good learning learning experience for sure. Yes. Yeah, so I'll, I'll be, yeah, doing it for uh, other people. And I still, like I said, uh, full-time gig doing um, building. And, and in the future, if I can... We'll see uh, on either building from scratch another one for ourselves or or uh, doing it the uh, converting. I uh, yeah, I, I think there's a lot I mean, to, uh, to be said about one converting one or building one. There's a lot I of just equity. did one. Sorry, mm -hmm. oh, I just did one. Yeah, I just converted one of my. Um, a residential home into eight bed. Um, like we talked um, in our small group. Oh. Um, but what you guys have done, I'm kind of sitting here like savoring. I'm mean, shaking. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking, how the hell you can do that? You know, but you guys are very, very courageous. And I think the future is all yours. You're going to be successful in everything you do. If you can pull this together, you're all in. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, well, I'll reach out to you guys soon. Okay. Sounds great. Sounds good. All right. I'm pretty sure I lost half of my hair during the process, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. I would be cleaning the drain out in the shower. I thought there was that a rat infestation with all the hair in the tub. <laughs> what are you doing in here? You drowning mice? You must pull up a big clump. <laughs> what the heck? If it was easy, everybody would do it. That is true. It's it's not easy, but if you want it bad enough, you'll make it happen. Yeah. Yes. And just by looking at it and like when people say, oh, I want to do an assisted living home. Oh, you're thinking, oh, yeah, you're going to bring people in and making money and all that kind of confusion. <laughs> but people don't understand the whistles that, you know, blows and whistles that get into it. And yeah. I'm only, mine, is, mine is only eight bad, but like you guys did a great project. I'm kind of yes, shaking. Seriously, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is very, very good. Even to pull up that kind of place in in a neighborhood like that, wow, mm -hmm. that's mind blowing and amazing. 
Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank thank you. you. All right. Anybody else want to contribute tonight? Well, Brianna and Craig, I thank you so much for sharing your story. Uh, Absolutely. It was inspirational and you definitely have showed what pe perseverance can do and how necessary it is to, to accomplish what you have accomplished. So uh, let me give you a, a thumbs up there. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again. And uh, so we're going to go to the next part of our meeting, which uh, is our haves and wants. And in our haves and wants, if you have a service you'd like to share with the group, uh, if you are looking for partners, if you uh, have or want anything, that's what this is for. So I will open it up uh, to whoever would like to address the group. I'll, I'll start off. Um, we want residents. <laughs> <laughs> if you know of anybody looking, we want residents in the Arvada area. We need to fill at least four more beds what's your Same price here. what do you, what do you charge what's your budget? um so we on the new side um the the rooms start around 5300 okay. um that that you saw it comes with its own full private bath mm -hmm. um it's a, obviously depends on assessment as well but that's usually generally what it is um, we have some we have a room on the original side that's lower than that it has a shared bath so mm -hmm. Those are around 47. Mm -hmm. So we're at 47 to 53, roughly. Okay, good. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Do you guys yes. have the ability to have memory care residents, like security at all? Or? No, we're not a secured unit. Um, we do have some residents that have some form of dementia. You're going to have that. I mean, you know, but the, the residents that we have, you know, they, they're not a flight risk. They're not combative. Um, they're just a little confused. I mean, you're going to have some of that, but we're definitely not a memory care. Um, we just, it's its not a secure facility. So we've thought about that, maybe in our next one, potentially. Um, that way we have the next stepping stone. If we have a, a current resident that gets to that point, we can just keep them within. Um, but as of right now, no. Yeah, that is actually what my husband and I are planning on doing for our first one is a memory care with security. security your unit and all of that right that is boy that's going that's all my, in <laughs> I, that's my specialty I've been that's who I work with and I've worked with for a long time so yeah um, that's where we're headed so we'll see yeah <laughs> yeah okay hey Brianna do we have any more uh, haves and wants uh, and we will leave the meeting open for probably uh, 15 minutes after our um, after we're done and I do want to remind everybody to put your contact information into the chat. So, and you can go into the chat and actually uh, download that. So, uh, Ami, you have your hand up. Yes. Hey, Brianna, question about the staffing ratio for the caregivers. Do you guys have a straight rules for the staffing ratio or how do you do for the staffing, like caregiver ratio with the clients? So, um, basically, you set your own ratios um, in your own policies and procedures. I believe the requirement, the, the minimum is a one to 10, I think is what the state requires for the state of Colorado. Okay. Um, but for us, we're a, we're a eight to one. So to one. Um, I mean, right now we're, we're not. Right now we're uh, one to five, essentially, right now because we're not fully occupied. Um, so we keep a, a, a better ratio um, just again, because our, our staff members do everything. So they do all the cooking, cleaning, laundry, caregiving activities. They do everything. So we oh, have so two you during, know. we have two during the day and one overnight and we have oh, a wake staff. We have a wake staff overnight. Oh, okay. So you don't have a separate chef and a cleaning lady. They are the one do. that would be great. Yeah, I mean, just at this point in time, it's too too costly for that. Um, if we had multiple homes, that, that would make better multiple sense. Multiple homes. Scalability. Better. Absolutely. But for one home, it just doesn't really make a lot of sense financially. Um, mm -hmm. So, and, you know, I think it's pretty common for your caregivers to do the cooking and cleaning and all that anyway. And when you have two, such a low staff to 
client ratio, it's, it's very easily done. Plus we have the house manager that's in there as well. So she's the third person during the day. Perfect. So, and, yeah. so how about their appointments for the, you guys are charging separately for their appointments and uh, transportation and stuff or is which covered in everything? So um, we don't provide transportation. Um, we can get them a service if they want, but we don't include that in their price. Um, we work with Rocky Mountain Senior Care. So they actually come to the house. So if they need doctors, um, they come to the house and do house visits. We have an in-house pharmacy um, that, that delivers twice a day. Um, so they're not required to use our doctors in our pharmacy, but it's an option for them. Um, it makes it, you know, much easier for the resident, especially now during COVID, they don't have to leave the house. So um, we have a podiatrist that comes in, we have a hairstylist that comes in. So we don't include any of that. Their insurance covers all of that, except the hairstylist, of course. But um, so, you know, their, their insurance covers, you know, everything oh. that's needed. And, and the, the companies we work for, they, they take all insurance. So Okay, but the medical management for daily routine medications, do you guys manage that, right? And that's included. We do. That's yeah. included, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. You guys You're did a welcome. great job. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. And can you please share the insurance guy information? Yes. For the liability and malpractice insurance, please. That would yes. be helpful. Yes, I will. He's amazing. Um, and I know Kathy will attest as well, so... I think I have to I have to get contact with the Kathy. I'm planning to do <laughs> RAL classes. <laughs> I'm planning to do that online. Do you think it's worth it, right? The RAL class, the Genero class? Um it's informational. It's, mm -hmm. it's informational. Um when we did the three day course um in Arizona, I think what I mean it, it, it was very informational for sure. And it was um the networking was, I think, the most valuable part of that. Mm -hmm. Just like this group, I think the networking is just that you can't put a value to it. Um, the right. people that you meet, I mean, it really does take a village and having all these resources has been a blessing for us. Yeah, so I because think I did couple, yeah, I did his couple of seminar on and off. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking to do it or not, but I'm in that yeah. age. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely great information. Um, great resource. I mean, Gene Greeno, he's got some great resources too. They've got a mentorship program. Mm -hmm. um, you know, th there's there's a lot out there um, to help. Um, so I think it's just again educating yourself, um, knowing like what we talked about with your municipalities, with the state regulations is key. It's going to be key. So. Okay, guys, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, last oh, time that you've had your hand up, uh, we're still on a half and one. So um, we will leave this open for questions uh, as soon as we get through the halves and ones here. And uh, again, you guys can hang out and network as well. Uh, Les, go ahead. Uh, I'm introducing a, uh, I've talked to a lot of you on the uh, connections that we did tonight. I'm, I'm representing a German medical device that uh, has been FDA cleared in May for any type of pain relief. Uh, acute, chronic, arthritic, also uh, overexertion of muscles. It is based on a smartphone. It is the first ever. And it works with microcurrent um, frequency and biogenic balancing. It also helps with sleep. Uh, anxiety, different things. And it's also, it's FDA cleared too, so any doctor can recommend it, but the same time it's okay for over the counter. And what I wanna do is set up some times with some of the owners on this to come out and show you the technology. Uh, to give you an idea, it was cleared in May. And at this point in three months, we had 60,000 uh, apps sold for $120 million. This is the biggest change in healthcare. And to just give you a slight history, it was designed in the 1920s by American doctors. The FDA and the American Medical Association kicked it out of America. It was perfected in Germany. Now it's back under FDA clearance. And so it basically is the alternative to medical marijuana or CBD, 
CBD oil for pain, uh, stress, or sleep. Love to come out and show you the different technology, any of the owners. All right, thanks, Les. Uh, did anybody else have any haves, wants, announcements that they would like to share with the group? Heather. Hi. Um, yeah, we are in desperate need for a really good staff. <laughs> so um, I, know, I know there is the, um, the connect to care jobs. And so I just wanted to see if anybody has used that, um, any of the other um, smaller facilities, if you've used that. And then how did you get on? Because I tried to go register there and they said you had to basically be invited by CDPAG and they would contact you through your portal and we haven't seen anything. So just wondering if anyone has any good advice on staff. Good luck. <laughs> That's you might probably also put that on the Facebook, Heather, just because it may have a broader reach than our 25 yeah. people here. Yeah, has anybody done the, um, the connect to care jobs? No, I'd like to learn more about that myself. Sorry, okay. So I have something. Um, have you heard of the Senior Community Service Employment Program for mm -hmm. low-income low seniors? It's SCSEP. I would suggest um, it's, it's yeah, anyway, it's, throughout, it's here in the Denver metro area. And actually, it's a training program for older adults. And, but a lot of people have the training as older adults. They, they have been caregivers, they have been QMAP. So I don't know, you could call them, you could look up SESEP, Senior Community Service Employment Program. Also Arapahoe Douglas Works has a big older workers program. I would suggest calling them and seriously, looking at people at age 55 plus as caregivers, QMAPs. Yeah, I, I would have to concur with that. Um, a lot of the staff members that we've had that have been older have been the most reliable. Um, Absolutely. And obviously mm -hmm. the most experienced. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, it's, it's, it's a tough, tough thing to get good staffing. Um, oh, I mean, it's so hard. It's just so hard. Mm -hmm. So any help in that realm is definitely, um, could you repeat that again? Arapaho? what was that again? It's Arapaho Douglas, Arapaho Douglas Works. It's the Workforce Center for Arapaho Douglas County. And oh, okay. Jefferson, but it's Arapaho Douglas Works, and they really do have a great older workers program. So okay. you can look that up. But I, I can contact you, too, because I actually used to... Um, be the state administrator for the senior community service program for many years. So okay. um, anyway, I can, if you want to, con you know, if we, we can talk. And I also um, was an administrator in an assisted living home. So I, I understand, I understand your constraints. I do. Yeah. Awesome input there. Okay, any other haves or wants? If not, we will go just into some open networking. Um, I typically would leave this open for 15, 20 minutes, something like that. And uh, that if you have questions or if you wanna pull somebody aside, I think there is a way to go into a, a private breakout room if you want. But uh, you know, we encourage you guys to get to know each other. Again, this is our, our shot at networking <laughs> uh, virtually. So we try to make the most of it. No more haves than once. Uh, going once, going twice. Okay. Well, I want to thank everybody for taking the time out to join us tonight. Uh, I'm sorry we had a problem with the links, and I'm glad you guys got through. And I, I'm, I'm kind of embarrassed. I don't know what I did wrong, other than not test it uh, prior to coming on. So. But uh, those of you that were able to join us, we really appreciate it. And hopefully we can bring value to you every month. And uh, hopefully we'll get together within the next, oh, I don't know, two, three, four months, maybe after the election, COVID will go away. Oh, the election. <laughs> Vern, th thank you so much for doing this tonight. This was really exciting. This was fun too. I mean, this was, you, you're, you're just wonderful. Thank you. Well, I'm glad you guys yeah, Thank you, Vern. I agree. I have a thank last you. question for uh, Brianna and uh, Craig. Um, what pharmacy, what in-house pharmacy did you use? 
Um, we use Alpine Pharmacy. Okay, and what is the insurance that you use? Uh, so the insurance is through Pinnacle. Um, the gentleman I used is Blake Crawford. I was just about to type that in. I'm looking for his number on my phone right now. Okay. Uh, and he's been, he's, he's a rock star. I mean, he's amazing. Um, let's see. Did you say you used him for liability insurance? I used him for everything. Okay. So um, he got it all done for us and, and I couldn't recommend anyone better. And please do put that in the chat. That would be good info for some people. Yep, I'm getting him in there now. I'm just looking for his uh, phone number here. Thank you. Great job tonight. Thank you. Thank you. It was Thank good. It was. Thank you, Brian. Really you always do a great job. And I mean, people like Brianna and Craig, they're giving us some hope. Uh, we got discouraged with some of us. We are learning something and it, it's getting excited again. <laughs> That's really true. <laughs> That go get them. So go yeah. get them. You can do it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I have faith in all of us. <laughs> yes. So, Brianna, um, do, you, do you drink wine? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm about, I'm starting. <laughs> I have developed uh, a taste for wine. Yes, I never did before, but now I do. <laughs> I, need, I need a fellow, uh, a fellow owner slash administrator slash wearing all sorts of hats that drinks wine to hang out with. So. Oh yeah. my gosh. My husband, my husband and I um, are very similar. So he does all the, you know, contract type of stuff and has been flipping houses and doing all that. And I'm a banker and do all the finances. Oh. We, just oh. opened, we just opened our first facility. We got our license March 6th and then got shut down by COVID. Uh, oh, talk no. about, talk yeah. about timing. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And we, and we did from ground up. So we did not have existing residents to carry the bill. Um, oh my God. Yeah. So, yeah, so you've it's, really enjoyed wine, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> I just get it shipped to my house now. <laughs> you know, they have that. There's a monthly wine club that's out there. Yep, that's what I do. Um, but anyway, it would be it would be nice to uh, hang out with you guys and and commit commiserate. So we're up to we're up to seven residents now, basically in the Yay! Last, in the last uh, two and a half months or so. So wow. how did you do that? Tell me how you did it. Um, it's uh, mostly mostly placement agents um, at first and then it's really been word of mouth our families have been super happy we're like you we're private we're private pay we have nicer high-end um we actually have a nine thousand square foot house oh wow um, what, what part of town we're in lakewood which was terrible and mm, it's okay. west metro fire which was uh, even they're, worse they're <laughs> yeah. a little difficult yeah yeah so we had all the all the same struggles plus. Um, yeah, yeah. We were pretty lucky. Our bad is pretty, pretty great to work for, but. Yeah, I don't think I would do this in Lakewood again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, congratulations. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's been a challenge, but the, um, but the word of mouth is great because then you don't have to pay placement agent fees. Right. Way um, really cheaper, yeah. Yeah, but the placement agents have been, have been great and, um, and they're doing really well. We get, you know, at least, uh, at least one referral a week, probably. Trying to nice. So did you convert a house? Is that what you did? Or how did, how did you do yours? Yeah, we started, we started with a house. It was, um, it was kind of under, it was, it was a screwed up house. Anyway, Mark was going to actually do it as, as a flip initially. And, um, and then we kind of got into this and developed a passion for it. Same thing, just, just touring and seeing some of the other facilities that weren't, weren't really top notch and what yep. we wanted to do and so we we put it we put an addition on but it's two stories so we have some other complications we do have an elevator um but you know the fire department doesn't like two stories so yeah yeah, yeah. but it but it's nice it's on an acre and a half it is on well water <laughs> gotcha yeah and which could be a little challenging i'm sure yeah. so we have to we have store city sewer? Uh, we do not. We have septic. Septic. Um, and we have, so we have three 1,500 gallon storage tanks. Tank, yeah. We had to build a water storage room, basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I bet. 
Wow. Yeah. 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 Craig, I'm sure you and Mark could, uh, could, could swap Change all sorts the stories of you bet, I'm sure. stories about, yeah, how miserable things can be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So it would be nice to it would be nice to connect with you guys. I didn't see your contact info in the chat there. Uh, uh, we put it. I'll yeah, throw it up there. We could put it in there again. Do you still have the chat? Yeah, it's in there. Oh, it is in there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. it's in there. I downloaded the chat. I just didn't. I still don't see it on there. Let's um, see. We are. Uh, it's at it's at the bottom kind it's of. It's at now. the bottom, like eight forty three p.m. Got it. Got it. Okay. Heather, I asked, what put your phone number? What's your number? I want your telephone number. Oh, yeah. Here, let me um, I'll put that on there too. I'll so, just, I'll just put so, my cell phone number. So, you were working with placement officer, placement um, people to get residents in? Yeah, we're working with um, placement. We've had about half and half placement agents and just referrals and word of mouth. Mm -hmm. Okay. But us too. Us about the same, yeah. You and they didn't charge you. The placement people didn't charge you. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, oh yeah. they <laughs> charge. Oh, well, that's what I thought. So they <laughs> charge one one month. Yeah. No, they just really like me for their charge. Uh -huh. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. Good for you. Good for you. It was all that wine. She wined and dined them. <laughs> yeah. Right. right. No. Yeah. They charge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a lot of wine. <laughs> So. Okay. There are some care manager agencies that don't charge, actually. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know oh. these people? I do. I was a care manager for one of them. So. Oh, we're going to be yeah. calling you then. <laughs> Your phone's about to get flooded. <laughs> <laughs> but now I'm a consultant. There you yeah. go. My home. So, aging services consultants. Very yeah. nice. Yeah. Audrey, I think you met Mark at the GDPRA Pi Christmas party. Oh, okay. Hey, Mark. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Hello. Yeah. So, yeah. So we we, you know, if you don't know the GDPRA, I yeah, they're um, wonderful and they're Brianna, great. Yeah. yeah, Craig, you should get involved with them too. Yeah, I actually um, I've been emailing back and forth. It was pre right of right when COVID hit. Um, so I'm on the strain of emails, I think, for the GDPRA. So um, I haven't officially joined yet, I don't think, but we've just been, well, you see, we're crazy. So, no, <laughs> but no. we will be joining for sure. They're, they're a really, they're a good support group too. And yes. they, they have a lot of great information and they just passed it, helped um, the house. They created a couple bills that, you know, got passed for assisted living. Right. Mm -hmm. They were in Polish of year about the outdoor visitation thing, which was great for us. Yeah. Yes. No, what no, was absolutely. that? Absolutely. What did they you were, say, Mark? They were just really big advocates for getting some visitation and being That's able to, to figure that out. And so they've been petitioning the governor and, and um, really advocating for especially the smaller communities. So. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, great presentation. Thank you, guys. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank Absolutely. you. Hopefully, we can um, we can get together and, and stuff. I think that would be fun. No, that would be uh, great. Absolutely. Well, best wishes to all of you. Congratulations. That's Thank you, everyone. That's cool. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, people. A great presentation. Yeah. Thanks, Thank everybody. You. Right. Thank you. Hey, Craig, Thank congratulations, you. man, Brianna. Hey, hey guys. What's up, Mohammed? Awesome, thank you. It's awesome. I'm glad to see you guys pulled it up. It's awesome. I know. So happy for you guys. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Have a good night. Bye bye. So, how are you? Yes. How are Hi. you? Oh, hello. I'm well, thank you. How are you doing, Fran? Uh, so I'm kind of stressed out, and I'm kind of in the same boat. I mean, the other couple, they did, they got their, what, license in March, and now there's seven people. They have seven people. I don't have anybody. I just enrolled one in today. Oh, I mean, well, con congratulations on the one. Yes. Hello. After three months, though. <laughs> I know. Yeah. That's. 
this, it's the COVID. It's, you know, it's just really hard. So tell me, Fran. Okay, so it, it was you and I, we were going to talk. Right. Yes. You the one. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I was like, ah. So, um, okay. You know, should we should we hang up this because this is this is you know this is the Zoom call. Should should we hang up and you want to call me on my phone? Yeah, that would be great. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. You call. Just give me a call on my cell phone. Okay. okay. All right. Perfect. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye everyone. If we're gone. Okay, bye.